want to welcome every one of you, even them that are watching online in our service today. And I really want to say you're most welcome. Feel at the presence of God. Feel at the feet of Jesus. I don't like saying feel at home because sometimes home, sometimes it may not be that nice. Sometimes, some, not every time. But when you feel at Jesus' feet, then you feel everything. Can you say amen? Today I want to talk about the power of prayer. And uh, let's read in the book of Luke 18, verses 1. I just want to pick it there as a way of introducing my, my, the subject today. And I've been thinking about it. Prayer, prayer, prayer. What it does, what it can do, and what it has done in the Bible, and what it can do. And I said, and there's something that I've been feeling in my heart. Prayer is not popular. Yet it is a thing that transforms things that don't happen. Sometimes when I come to the end of myself and I realize this one I can never solve it, I will just give it to my God. I will just go on my knees. I will just call upon God and I tell him, Lord, do a new thing. The Bible said, then he spoke a parable to them. That was Jesus Christ. That men always to pray and not to lose their heart. Men all and he spake a parable unto them to this end. And he said that men always ought always to pray and not faint. Now the Bible does not say he's only the pastors, he's only the intercessors, he's only the Christian that should pray, but all men shall pray. Despite their, their, where they come from, how they look like, young, small, old, they are ought to pray always. They're not, at, not at times, but all the time. Not when they are in, in problems, but all the time. Not when things are good or they are bad, or where their children are not succeeding or succeeding. But the Bible says men ought to pray always. It is an always, all the time, pray, pray, pray. Now, Jesus said, John, uh, uh, John, John 15, 5, he says, I am the true vine, and ye are the branches. Now, Jesus is saying, is, I am the true vine, and you are the branches. Now, attach, being attached to Jesus Christ, you can only be attached to him through prayer. If you are a prayerless Christian, you are the weakest Christian that can never overcome even in life. And he says, if you are bind in me and I in you, you bear much fruit. You produce, you have strength, you have life, you produce joy, you produce victory, you produce results, you produce wisdom, you produce understanding. Hallelujah. Prayer is the currency that buys what you need from the almighty God. Prayer is that which pulls God towards your side. You cannot go to a shop and you want something and you get it for free. You must have money. Now to God's store of all things, you only need to pray. Prayer is never bought. Prayer is in our hearts. Prayer is in the heart of a believer. But the enemy will make us not to pray. If you tell people to stand and pray, they will look at you or they will sit down and bury their head. And the devil will tell them, you cannot pray. What the enemy is telling you, don't pray so that you don't receive what God has put before you. Prayer is speaking to God. Prayer is communicating to the almighty God that you may receive what money cannot buy. It can receive what you cannot even afford, but you can get it through prayer. Can you say amen? The Bible says, I am the truth, I am the vine, and ye are the branches. And he abides in me, and I in him, bears much fruit. There is fruit that is bore. We bear fruits, but you bear more fruit. You bear more fruit. You bear more than ever when you abide in Christ. For without me, you can do nothing. Can you say amen? Jesus is saying, without me, you can do nothing. I know we can do with money. We can do with our understanding. 
but just for a short time. We can do young people, hard people. We can say, we can do, we can do without going to church. We can do without prayer. We have done it and we have seen other people do it. But there is something that Jesus is saying, yes, you can do, but you cannot go far. You cannot succeed. You cannot enjoy the blessings of God without me. I need Jesus today. Can you say amen? I need Jesus to overcome. I need Jesus to see the end of 2024 come to an end successfully. I want to see, I want, I want to have Jesus with me to see success, not failure. To move forward in victory without looking back. And I'll use my prayer. I'll use my mouth to pray. It is talking to God. Second Chronicles 7.14 says, If my people who are called by my name, and that is Jesus, that is God speaking. He's speaking to his people. He's speaking to his creation. We were created by God. It doesn't matter what science says. It doesn't matter what generation so and so says. But we were created by the almighty God. We did not produce ourselves. There is something that we cannot imagine. Science never created this world. Science never created this earth. It never created the universe. We found it here and we shall leave it here. There is a place where we come from and there is a place where we are going and the places where we are going is what we have chosen with our own lives when we live here. Can somebody say amen? So we cannot say there is no God. We cannot say it does not exist. We cannot say it does not work. We cannot say it does not answer prayers. He exists, he is living and he is alive because he is God. Can you say amen? The Bible says, if my people who are called by my name will humble themselves. God saw a word that was rebellious. He saw a word that was proud. He saw a word that, that, that was rebellious, careless, disobedient. But he tells them, if my people that have created with my own hands shall humble themselves. Now, what, are, what is he saying? Them that acknowledge I am their savior, that the, and acknowledge that I am their creator, them that acknowledge it's me who put life in them, it's me who have given them understanding, mind, and moving forward. He says, if they will ample themselves and pray, then myself, he says this, and seek my face, humility, that you are God, you created me. You brought me in this world. You've given me a family. You've given me a job. You've given me a mind to understand mathematics. I'm not a madman. I'm not crazy. I'm not walking streets naked. I'm not in the mortuary. But God, you have given me this. He says, I humble themselves and pray and call upon me. Then I will hear from heaven. And forsake and turn away their wicked ways of unbelief, of rebellion, of fighting, hatred. Then I will hear from heaven and I will forgive their sin and they will heal their land. I will heal their jobs. I will heal their families. I will heal their businesses. I will heal what they touch. Your land is what you do. Your land is what surrounds you. Your land is this church. Your land is your own. He shall be healed by God when you pray, when you turn around. Can you say amen? So prayer heals our families. Prayer heals our jobs prayer heals our land prayer heals our job our everything that we touch it heals our children it heals things that we don't that that we can never handle prayer is more powerful than any power in this world can you say amen the bible says there was that judge who did not fear god but there's a woman who feared God. She was a widow. She, was, she loved God. But she did not have everything like a judge. The judge had power to destroy. He had power to destroy, to build. But he did not fear God. But there is a woman who feared God. But she persisted with the prayer. And she moved until 
the king, the judge was broken. Can you say amen? Prayer will break the big man's heart for you to receive. The Bible says in Philippians 4, 6, be anxious for nothing. Instead, but in everything, prayer and supplication, anxiety is getting worried. Anxiety is when you transfer your problem and you bring it to yourself. Anxiety is when you transfer your fears from your mind to your heart and you start having sleepless nights. Anxiety comes when you feel you cannot overcome something. But the Bible says, don't worry, be anxious for nothing, but in everything by prayer and supplication. I can carry my Lord to God. I can carry my problem to my, to, to my Father who understands me. I know I can be weighed by things. I can be weighed by problems. I can be weighed by things that I cannot carry. But I have a father who says, Come to me ye that labor and are heavy loaded, and I will give you rest. I don't just come walking, but I come with prayer and supplication. He says by prayer and supplication, up telling God our needs and thanking him for all he has done. By prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, I am moving to God. I am praying. I am thanking him for what he did. The word, the things are pressing me so hard. I cannot move. I am a laughing stock. I am the last in the village. I am the last in the class. I am the last. I am poor. I don't have anything. But I will come to God with thanksgiving. He will understand and he will hear my prayer. And he will answer me in Jesus. Prayer is powerful. Prayer changes things. Prayer transforms somebody from a pit. David said in Psalms 40, I'll call upon the Lord who heard me and he inclined, I'll, he inclined and he lifted me. I waited patiently. I waited patiently. I prayed patiently. I was in a pit. I was in prison. I was in defeat. I didn't have anywhere to go, but I waited upon the Lord. He inclined because I was down, because I was low. He inclined, he lifted me up. He heard me. Oh, hallelujah. Prayer will answer your problem. But the enemy has put it, in fact, in this church, the most unpopular days are prayer days. Because the enemy has choked us so that we don't we struggle. We are in debts, Shylocks, auctioneers. I was I was reading on a newspaper, they are saying a place called Kitengela is the one which has the most auctioneering activities because of unpaid loans. Hallelujah. When you understand how to pray, hallelujah, God will give you wisdom so that you don't get what you cannot pay. So that you live at your means and you lift you. When you reach there, then you can afford. Can you say amen? He says, don't worry about anything. Anxious. When they pass you, don't worry. When they buy a car before you, don't worry. When they put you in a house without, without, and they leave you, don't worry. But the Bible says, but instead, pray about everything. Tell God what you need and thank him. He will do it in all the time. He says, be anxious for nothing. Hallelujah. I will not be anxious because you are ahead of me. I'm not going to be anxious because you have gone ahead. But in everything, by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your request be made known to God. He who answers with fire will answer you. 
Jeremiah 33, 3 says, Call unto me and I will answer. And I will show you mighty and great things that you have never heard. Church, if we can arise and say prayer. Prayer, you don't need a pastor. You don't need someone to lead you. You just need to kneel and tell God, I love you, Jesus. There was a young man, a story of a young man. He didn't know how to pray. He was not church so much. But one time he, he, he saw a church, so every morning he would go and say, Jesus, it's me, it's John. Then he would go to work. Every day he would come, Jesus, it is John. But one day he was very sick to die. He didn't know what to do. Then somebody came and he told him, John, it is Jesus, arise. And he realized he was praying. Prayer doesn't have a pattern. Call unto me and I will answer and I will show you great things. That is the hardest part of us to call upon him. It's free of church. But it's not popular because the enemy doesn't want us to understand what God does to us and what he can do. Now prayer enables us to move forward. It engages God. It is the currency that buys what we don't have from God. It engages God and it puts him in a position that he should bless you. I'll say and stand in his word and say, I'll call upon you today, God, because you have said it. It enables God's people and enlarges his kingdom. Jesus said, without me, you can do nothing. Once we are praying, we are ready to do anything until we are prayed. We can do nothing, but once we are prayed, we can do and accomplish much because we are in the realm of being blessed. Prayer is known throughout history as a major force for victory over the forces of destruction, especially prayer and fasting, if you want more. Prayer is known throughout history as a major deliverance tool from the destructive, distrustless agendas of the enemy. If the enemy is bothering you, call upon him and he will do it in the name of Jesus. I've called him and I've seen him do things in my life. I've called him and I've seen him do turn around things for me, fight my battles, fight my enemies, show himself mighty and strong before my uh, before things that I meet in my life. Just pray, just pray, just pray. One young man was telling us his story that he used to spend life in the clubs always, but his mother used to pray. And he would, and whenever time he's coming from home, the mother would only sleep when his son has come home. And he would just meet her praying. Then one day, God visited them in the club. And he said, he started crying, and he told his friend, come, let's go home. And our mother will pray for us because I know she has never slept and we shall be saved. And they came in their dragonness. And the ma they found the mother there, prayed for them, and they changed. Today, that young man is one of the greatest servants of God ever lived. Can you say amen? Never cease to pray for yourself, for your family, for your parents, for anyone that you know, and God will answer. God has no dustbin or prayers. God is never tired. He doesn't have visiting hours. He doesn't have prayer hours 8 to 10 or 8 to, 8 to 6. He's open 24-7. Call unto me and I will answer all the time. Prayer is known throughout history as a potent force of winning battles in life. Now, let's see some examples between prayer and victory. Number one, prayer preserve, preserves us. It preserves Israel in the land of Pasha, Israel. That is Esther 4.16. Call upon him 
Esther 4, 16. The Bible says, Hallelujah. It preserves or oh, gather all the Jews who are present in Shuzan. They were in captivity and fast for me. Neither eat nor drink for three days, night or day. My mates and I will fast likewise. And so I will go to the king, which is against the law, as if I perish, I perish. There was a law that no one should visit the king anyhow. But Esther was a Jew. They were under captivity. And she calls her people who were in slavery and tells them, pray, pray, pray. I'll go and see the king. I perish, I'll perish. And she went to see the king and everybody was shocked if you read the story. She moved, but she was preserved by prayer. Prayer will preserve you when you arise and take a step and say, this is the place I want to enter. This is the office I want to work in. I want to enter, I want to apply, I'll pray. It looks crazy. It looks dangerous. It looks you, as if you are committing murder. To Esther, she was committing murder. Because you could not go to the king and especially a woman. But he said, I perish, I perish. Pray and fast. God will turn around everything that is ahead. Prayer preserved. Number two, the children of Israel, in the days of prophet Samuel, that is now, they were preserved. First Samuel chapter 7, verses 9. If you read there, then you see, you also see Nineveh preserved by prayer when Jonah prayed. The Bible says, and Samuel took a second lamb and offered it as a whole burnt offering to the Lord. Then Samuel cried out to the Lord of Israel, and, and the Lord answered him. He cried to the Lord, and the Lord answered him. If he answered those days, why can't he answer us? It is not his problem. It is our problem. Let us turn around our attitudes. And the way we see our God, and God will hear and he will answer us. Micah 7, 8 says, don't laugh at me, my enemy. I'll call upon God himself and you he will hear me and you turn around. Don't, don't rejoice over me, my enemy. When I fall out of rise, when I sit in darkness, the Lord will be my light to me. Can you go to the next one? How bad the indignation of the Lord because I have sinned against him until he pleads my case and execute justice. For me, he will bring me forth to the light. I will see his righteousness when I pray. When the enemy is mocking you, pray. When anything is around you, putting you down, pray. Can you say amen? Pray, pray, pray. Pray all the time. Take the word of God and pray. Hallelujah. Let's go to 1 Samuel 7, 9. And let's, let's come to 10. Samuel prayed. Now as Samuel was offering up the burnt offering, the Philistine drew near a battle against Israel. Now remember, here is a one man praying. Here is one man calling upon God against a big army. That is coming. He's calling, he's praying. He's praying for a job, employment. He's praying for promotion. He's praying for increase. He's praying for something that God can do. The Philistine drew near to battle against Israel. But the Lord thundered with a loud thunder. May God thunder against our enemies. May God thunder and bring fire from heaven against our enemies in the name of Jesus. Then the, the, but the Lord thundered with a loud thunder upon the Philistine that day. So he confused them that they were overcome before Israel. Verse 11. And the men of Israel went out to Mizpah 
and pursued the Philistine and drove them back as far as below Bethka, down their own. He drove them home. He kicked them back where they came from. Verses 12. Then Samuel took a stone and set it up between Mizpah and Shen and called its name Ebenezer. Thus far the Lord has helped. Somebody will go with that testimony today. Thus far the Lord has helped. Thus far the Lord has blessed me. Thus far the Lord has done it. Thus far the Lord has brought me. Can you say amen? Give him praise in the name of Jesus. Remember the city of Nineveh, Jonah 3, 2. If God's plan can change because people prayed, as far as judgment was concerned, the devil's plan is more easily changeable by the power of prayer. Christ got to Nineveh, the great city. You know the story. But John, Jonah did not want those people to go to heaven. Hawatu sikutaka waende ni wenye dhambi, mungu sitaki kwa ubiria ili wabandilike. Lakini mungu, mungu anauruma. Can you say amen? Umemutendea, uovu, anatuma mtu Akuje, akubirie, diorudi. That's a kind God. Let's give him praise. What a beautiful God that we serve. Hallelujah. Now Jonah is saying, no, punish them. Punish them. They are not like me. Nime kutumikia, nimeenda kanisa, wakuji, ni wajeuri, wachome. Lakini mungu hana iyo. Anataka wote waokoke na wamujue yesu. Jonah rose, went to Nineveh according to the word of the Lord. Now Nineveh was exceeding great city, a three-day journey. But you know the story. And if you read down there, they prayed. If God's plan can change because the people prayed, so people of Nineveh believed God, proclaimed a fast, and put on sackcloth from the greatest to the feast of them. He went there to preach to them. When he was brought there by the fish, forcibly. Sometimes God will force people to come to your help, and you don't know. So, let's go to the next one. They prayed. Then the word of the Lord came to the king of Nineveh, and he arose from his throne and laid aside his robe, covered himself with sackcloth, and sat in ashes. When you pray, even the king turns. How many people pray? For this country. We only shout. We only demonstrate. But I wish. People would arise and go to the streets. Calling on God with sackcloth. This country would change. If the leaders top there. That leaders. Would say this week we shall demonstrate in prayer. In sackcloth. Praying and fasting for seven days in the streets of every city. Praying. It will be hard more than demonstration. And no police will throw a gun. Can you give him praise? Hallelujah. Now, Jonah mobilized Nineveh. He told them, you are about to sink. In, in Indian Ocean. You are about to sink in Pacific. You are about to sink in Red Sea if you don't repent and turn away. Jonah 3, let's go back to the verses. He caused it to be proclaimed and published throughout Nineveh by the degree of the king and his nobles. He told the king, tell the people to pray. Even if the president would arise and tell people, I proclaim, I declare a days, three days of fasting and prayers, and he leads it. What a wonderful country. Could we have the country of prayer? There's a country in South America where there are no jails. They were closed. 
Because there are no sinners. There are no thieves. Hakuna atroxis. Hakuna wovu. Kwa sababu watu wanampenda. 99% people love God. I preached to thousands of them one time. I was called. And I was speaking to Peru, Puerto Ricans. They were called. They were over 1,000. My wife was there. To, we were in a town called Killeen in, 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 in southern Texas. And I was called in that meeting to preach. I, could, I was very happy to, to greet Portelicans, Cuba. Oh, I, I, I was so happy to take photos with them. And I, I saw the reception of the gospel and the love of God that they had. They loved him. They were generous. They were good. They were broken. Those are countries you will never hear. They have revolts. They are killings. They are what? Because they embrace God and they put him back where he belongs. Our country is godless. We need God in reality. Not on face, but in heart. Inside and out, we need God. We need to repent. Jonah tells the king, proclaim from there. Tell people because you are heard what God is saying. But let man, the beast, be covered with sackcloth. At a paka, he lived fast. Sikuyo akuku pikwa ata umbu akukula ata mutoto. Mungu ndio awese kusikia. Look at the intense of prayer that was released that time. And how God withdrew with the aunt and he said, I will no longer do it. Some of the calamities that we pass is because we don't pray. We are like the sons of Skeva. Tunamujua Peter, tunamujua Petro, lakini nyinyi ni nani. Wanawakalimwa because their prayers were plastic and they were superficial. We need Deep-rooted prayer to God. Let's finish with Jonah. And then he says, the Bible says in verses 8, let everyone turn from his evil way, from the violence that is in his, in his ends. The violence that are in their ends. The jealousy, the fight, the hatred. And then verses 9. Who can tell if God will turn and relent and turn away from his fierce anger so that we may not perish? God's anger can be turned by prayer. God saw their works. He turned from their evil way and God relented from the disaster that he had said he would bring upon them and they did not do it. God can withdraw. God can regret. He can, he can say, sorry, I'm not going to do it because I'm commanded from up by people's prayers that I relent what I want to do. There's something the enemy is against us. And unless we pray, it's, going, it's not going to be relented. Our destiny He's, in, he's, he's threatened by the forces of darkness. But we can only release it by prayer. Then God saw their works and they turned from their evil way and God relented from the disaster that he, has, he had said you bring it. Can you say amen? Can you give him praise? Hallelujah.